What's up, fellow Sambarians? So, uh, I had a fellow Sambarian uh, drop off his sandbar at my place because it is not running. So, I figured this would be a good chance to make a video on solving issues for a sandbar that's not running. So, a little backstory on it. It was just imported pretty recently. And it was done by Roro, roll on, roll off, which the rules are in Japan that it must get onto the boat under its own power. So it got onto the boat under its own power. So it was running at some point. Then it got over here and it was running, but it wasn't running properly. And uh, hmm. so uh, Tristan. So he imports vehicles from Japan and sells them here. So this is one that he's imported that is going to get running and get cleaned up and sell it. And he sells them for a fairly good price compared to everyone else. So if you're interested in importing a truck, um, maybe I'll have some information to leave in the comments so you can contact him if you're interested in getting a Sambor. Maybe you want this one. <laughs> So it's a just a basic white KS uh, KS4, just like mine. Um, very, very standard, not supercharged, carbureted. And um, he had it obviously running at one point, wasn't running properly. So he tried doing adjustments on the carburetor and now it's just like completely dead. So I am going to start from the beginning as if uh, I'm not entirely sure what's going on. So we can make a good video on getting a non-running sandbar running. So when he brought it over, it does crank. It turns over. If you full throttle it when you're starting it, it kind of wants to go, but then it will die. So it's getting spark. It's getting fuel. Because yesterday I actually, I actually took... Um, I took the spark plugs out and connected them, kept them connected to the spark plug wires and we were getting a strong spark. So we're getting spark. The spark plugs were wet, so we're getting fuel. So there's something not happening correctly with the air and the fuel uh, coming from the carburetor. So, you know, I wanted to start from the beginning, make sure that we're getting spark, make sure that we're getting fuel into the uh, cylinders and um, we're, apparently not getting a good amount of air so it's probably running super rich and then it's just dying and i'm stuck to the truck what the heck get yeah. um and i did notice that it has the um the chinese black wires the cheap wires which in the past they have caused problems um so i thought maybe you know let's see i don't have a key or anything to open the back, but let's see if I can get this thing open real quick. So typically in the past, yeah, the mic's working. Um, black wires have been bad, bad. Black is bad. Um, I mean, they're they're not designed for the sandbar. I don't. I'm not entirely sure what these come off of. Uh, I wonder if we could run like this part number and it would bring up vehicles this works with. But I mean, the coil to the distributor is like a mile long so it's not right it's not the right length um, these boots one boot is longer than the rest of them so it's obviously made for a different vehicle but I pulled the spark plugs out and I kept them on the each wire to make sure each wire was sparking and I would ground it on the valve cover and I had my girlfriend crank it and we were getting a really strong spark. So we're getting spark and I pulled the spark plugs out and they're wet, covered in fuel. So we're getting fuel. So, you know, it's not a distributor, not a distributor cap. It's not an issue with spark. It's an issue with air or too much fuel, which he did do some tinkering, which I, I don't recommend this, um, but you know, it's okay, he tried. Uh, this is your air fuel uh, screw, and it looks like it's down really far. So that might, uh, I'm not entirely sure. We're going to, I have, so I have, thank goodness, I have like a base to go off of. So I can see, you know, where is our air fuel 
screw is sitting at. Um, he kind of tinkered with the accelerator pump under there, which you shouldn't mess with that. Just FYI, it's set by the factory. So there's a screw here that actually pushes on the accelerator pump arm. And there's another, that guy right there, that's like spring loaded with a screw. And they're usually painted, so you just leave those alone. Typically shouldn't have to mess with those, typically. Um, and then your idle screw is down here. So we might have to mess with the idle screw again. And thank goodness the carburetor is fairly clean. So it's not like this truck looked like it was, you know, abused. It's a pretty clean engine. No, no oil leaks or anything, which is good. So we have a clean carburetor to work with. But I am going to take the carburetor off. We're going to replace solenoids, replace the fuel cutoff, which usually gives us an issue of cold starts. And we're going to clean everything inside and kind of inspect it and put it back on and see if it turns out that, you know, it was just a dirty carburetor, which for the most part, they are just usually dirty carburetors. I do notice that the fuel filter down there, um, it looks to be bigger than factory. OEM, so it looks like the possibly the cheap one off of eBay. I'm um, not sure. I might, you know, I might change that too. But let's let's just get into the carburetor and see if we can figure something out. So this video is just going to be a good one for the guys. You get a sandbar that's not running or not running right, and you've already checked your spark, making sure everything is, you know, sparking obviously. And if the spark plugs are wet. There's obviously fuel getting into the cylinders. So now it's just a matter of figuring out why the air isn't, it's not getting air or whatever reason it is because something's dirty or I don't know. The choke might not be working. So I'm going to actually take this carburetor off. And I mean, that's, that's the next thing I would do if I was in this situation um, since he's dropped it off to me to fix it. Um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the carburetor off and we're going to take it apart, clean it, replace the solenoids and such. He gave me a few parts to put on it. Accelerator pump, air, the air fuel solenoid. Um, I don't have any fuel cutoff solenoids yet, but uh, we'll work around that. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see if this thing will start up. And hopefully that was just the issue was... A dirty carburetor with some bad screw settings, and we can get this this girl running again. So, I don't know if this is going to be a multi-part deal, but I figured it would be a good video to make if you're in a situation where your sandbar's not running, and you can kind of see what I would do to get it running um, and hopefully fix. So, let's get the old carburetor off, since, again, we know it's got spark and it's getting fuel. So we're going to take that all off and then uh, start taking apart the carburetor. So let's do this. And it looks like I got a visitor here today. Pollito. <laughs> I got the heater going because it's a cold one today. So she's like, oh, I'm going to hang out in here with the heater. And all the other patitos, I'm not sure where they're at. But yeah, let's get to it. So before you go ahead and take your carburetor off, um, this one is non not AC equipped, uh, obviously. There's no compressor. So there's just one less thing we gotta worry about. But uh, let's make sure that we get a good picture, a good video before we go and we take all these hoses off because I know I see this come up a lot. I don't know where this hose went, uh, blah, blah, blah. So always take a good video or a picture of the carb before you take it off, obviously take these covers off. I'm going to do that so you can get a real good idea of these uh, hoses that are in here and where they reconnect because you just got a couple hoses that come off and then uh, we just got to make sure that we put everything back correctly when we put it back on. So let's get to it. Okay, so I'm taking the covers off, obviously, so we can see what's going on here. Usually you don't want to mess with that screw. It's got a paint mark from the factory usually just want to leave that alone. Same with this guy. I don't think you really want to mess with that. Um, so I'll have to check to see what that looks like on the other carburetor to see where that is set. 
and I know not everybody's going to have another carburetor to um, go off of, but uh, hopefully I can maybe give some measurements or something as to where it's supposed to be. So anyways, get that out of the way, got the cover off. So now we just have a couple vacuum lines running across, which uh, we will, you know, take off of the carburetor and uh, make sure that we remember where they go. This one's your choke, your choke, uh, your choke piston. Which that has a vacuum line running to like this, uh, like check valve almost or something. So we're just going to make sure that all the vacuum lines look good as we're taking stuff off. This one right here runs to the breather on your um, distributor cap. So I'm not really concerned. It doesn't plug into anything. I see that get asked all the time. Where does this hose go? Goes nowhere. It's just a breather for your distributor cap. So you can just get that guy out of out of the way. It's that him to the side. But now we got our vacuums running off our intake manifold. That uh, we don't. There's just a couple that we actually don't have to unplug. Like this one, we don't have to unplug. Um, this one, we don't. I think we have to unplug because these two are running to the intake manifold this one's running to our choke pumps i mean our choke piston i don't remember what i called it before but it's a piston choke or choke piston just have to undo that one and then this one coming off the top of the carburetor so there's not a whole lot and then you have your fuel your air this is going to the air fuel solenoid so it's taking recycling air i think that builds up in the uh, gas tank so you don't get vapor lock so that one's running to your air box and then this one's running probably somewhere from that charcoal canister right there i think that's a charcoal canister probably or some kind of canister for the fuel fumes um, and then we have underneath there's a, a thermal valve assembly there's a couple lines running to that and then we have our four-wheel drive solenoid um, vacuum line that I think, I think that might run to the thermal valve. I'm not sure, but it runs into your air box and then runs to your solenoid, which actuates four wheel drive and making sure that you don't try to go into four wheel drive when you're throttling and it just works off a vacuum. As soon as you let off the gas, you're not creating a massive vacuum. So then it flicks the solenoid for four wheel drive. So we'll undo that, these lines, and then we have our fuel lines couple fuel lines here that we just have to take off. Um, so the tools that you're really only going to need is a good, like these hose pliers, so you can grab the hose and twist it and kind of break it free because they're usually pretty sticky. And then probably some pliers to get the clamps off. Um, and then we will need to take the throttle cable off the mount so we can get it off of the... Uh, actual throttle and yeah I mean, it's, not, it's not that bad of a job so and obviously take off our intake hose so let's uh and then i forgot our solenoids there's our solenoid plug so when we get to that point we'll unplug the solenoid plug and always make sure that your solenoids are plugged into something because there's your plug right there so always make sure that's also plugged in too um that could be causing some issues Oh man, let's get some stuff off of this thing and see what we got going on. Okay, so let's start. Let's just start by taking the uh, throttle cable off, which you only really want to mess with the. Let's see if you can see. We only really want to move, move this one in front because we want to keep that one still so then we don't get our throttle out of position. But. You can always check it when it's on there. You just you don't want it obviously pulling on the throttle, but also you don't want to have a ton of slack too. So you can always readjust that, but we're gonna get that off. Come on, baby. Okay. So that has been removed, and then we'll take said slack out. Man, this thing is nasty. Why? They tried lubing it or something. 
Okay, so we got our throttle cable out. The top one is the left one, and the right one is the bottom one. And there might be a little bit of fuel that comes out, but this is what's good about these ones is you got to break, break the hold. There we go. And then you should, after it kind of clicks, you should be able to get it off. So I don't know, maybe, no, not really. And obviously be careful around all your vac lines and your fuel lines. Stuff is old. There, so you hear that click. I don't know if you can hear it actually because I got my mic, but it'll click when it breaks free. And then you can usually at that point take it off. You want to hear that click. Yeah, a little bit of fuel came out, but that's okay. So we got our fuel lines off. Now we can take our air solenoid kind of recycle air. Get that off. This one's pretty. This one just comes off. Whoop. Put that out of the way. This one. Let's see if we can hear. Let's see if we can hear it snap. Yeah, there we go. Good snap. So you want to hear a good snap, and then it should be uh, should be ready to pull pull off. And these hoses are different sizes, so you can't put it on the wrong one. Same with the fuel lines, I think. Let's see. Yeah, fuel lines are... So you can't put the fuel lines on the wrong... They're different. Different inner diameter. Let's get that out of the way. And we want to be careful. We don't want to break that nipple off. And we don't want to break the nipples off on the... Uh, thermal valve down below. Okay. So, got this guy that comes off of the, uh, this is your, this hose right here is your, oh man, vacuum advance for your distributor. Goes down to the little saucer on your distributor. So that's your vac, vac advance. We'll put that out of the way. There we go. Little snap, little snappy snap. So we'll get it out of the way. And then these guys, this one runs off of the choke piston or piston choke. So here on the other side is your choke, well, like actuator. So you, these are coolant lines running in. So if you take those off, we're probably gonna have a little bit of coolant that falls out, which is not the end of the world. And don't worry, you don't have to try to bleed your air system afterwards. At least I never had to. Just uh, replace any coolant that drops. Yeah, a little bit of coolant's coming out. That's okay. Okay, got that guy off. Coolant lines out of the way. So now I got to get a screwdriver so we can get the air hose off. So I'll be right back. Okay, so this is what I want to show. This is what you need to be careful with. A, this part is very expensive to replace, and B, they're old and fragile. So you have your thermal valve down there, which one is running. Up. So this one's kind of running from there up to the air box, which then goes to the solenoid. And then that guy there is running up and then it looks like it runs over here to your intake manifold i believe that's where that guy's going but regardless be very careful taking the hoses off of that guy you don't want to break the nipples um some old carburetors have three or four posts this is only a two post the three or four posts are no longer available so you pretty much have to fix it or find it around out of storage space storage space but uh anyways don't break that thing be very careful with it i do have a couple for sale but they're very hard to get they usually are out of stock at the manufacturer so they take forever to receive but just uh keep it and reuse it don't break it <laughs> so i'm gonna keep getting stuff off here so everything has been disconnected took the little 
carefully took the hoses off the thermal valve down there at the bottom of the carb. All the vacuum lines have been removed. Um, and now there's just like two 14, I think there's are 14s, uh, millimeter nuts here on the end that bolts the carb to your intake manifold. And there's a couple gaskets in there that we're going to have to uh, not reuse them. One is paper and the rubber ones are probably blown or not any good. So we'll replace those when we put it back to the intake manifold. But I think for the sake of time, since I know this one works, uh, we are just going to bolt this one up and see if we can get the truck started. And if it does start, then we know that that carburetor was dirty and needed to be cleaned. Cell noise might have been bad. And then we'll, uh, I will rebuild that and clean it. And then we will reinstall it on the truck. And then everything should be hunky-dory. All right, lunch break over. But that took like five minutes to take everything off and two bolts on the front to take the carb off. So it's, it's a very quick job. It can be a little intimidating with all the vacuum lines and hoses running to it, but it's really, there's only a few hoses that plug into the carb. The rest of them kind of run over it and you just kind of move them off to the side. Now let's, uh, we can get the, uh, sorry, we can get this these bolts off which is, they're kind of tight but basically a lock washer and a nut and I'll show you the gaskets that you're gonna need to reinstall this uh, carburetor and again I do have all that stuff in my store so if you're going to do this be sure to pick up the gaskets because you will need them the paper one is going to rip apart and then you have rubber seals in here that sandwich all inside this plastic insulator which i saw these two if you think yours is bad um that sandwich inside there to keep the coolant from going into your intake manifold because coolant runs into the intake manifold but if you don't have the right seal in there it'll actually leak through the paper and into the manifold which you know obviously we don't want coolant we're not we haven't uh invented cars to run off of coolant quite yet so we don't want to do that but i'm gonna continue doing this and then when i get it off we'll uh, do some inspecting okay so the first thing i noticed when i took this split the case here or split the it's dumping fuel just dumping so we're obviously flooding oh man there's still well there's fuel and coolant coming out but there was a my fingers smell like gas, so that thing was just full of gas. Probably way too, uh, I don't know if down means rich, or up means rich, but I think there was some adjustments that weren't entirely happy. So we still have to get the, uh, we still gotta unplug our solenoids. Okay, so I see this come up quite a bit. How do you unplug? your solenoid plug, which it is a little confusing. I shouldn't say confusing, it's just a little misleading. So you see this right here and you think, oh, you press on that to uh, get the plug out. Well, it's not. So there's actually a little flap right here. This is why I always get confused when I try to take the plugs out because it's kind of misleading and I don't do it enough to remember. But if you look in between the leg like, buck teeth here, there's your flap. And that's what catches on the little triangle clip. So what you got to do is get a pair of pliers, squeeze here to pull out, and then just kind of lift on that flap a little bit. And then we unplug our solenoids. So that's how you do it. And then if you're going to take and replace your solenoids, you got to depin and uh, reuse the old plug unless you get a fuel cutoff solenoid that comes with a new plug but the air solenoids do not and you depin the air solenoid section and plug into it and make sure that you plug it in um, correctly and then you can uh, yeah that's uh, that's how you do that one so now the carburetor should technically lift right out filling up my phone with all 
videos. I'm going to run out of space here. Okay, so now that that's unplugged, let's see if we can get the carb out. Yeah, that just came unplugged. There we go. There she is, the carburetor. But, uh, yeah, there you go. And then if you want to replace your thermostat, uh, now's the time... Now's a good time to replace your thermostat because the uh, thermostat is right, right there. So it's real easy to get to your thermostat now. And uh, you got access to it. Otherwise, you got to come up from underneath, which is always fun too. But uh, yeah, there you go. That is what I'm talking about. Now here is the seals on our intake manifold. So we have one rubber seal there and then Let's see, and then you have another one. So you have a paper gasket in there, then you need plastic insulator. And inside there, there's a, another seal that kind of looks like this. This lower section right here. So you gotta make sure you sandwich that in between the paper and the insulator. And then this one goes on the outside so you don't get any coolant running into your intake manifold. But uh, yeah, let's kind of do some comparison on this one and the one I have and get it bolted in there. All right, let's go ahead and get this guy bolted up. So make sure your surface, your, <clears throat> your like mating surface is pretty clean. Make sure you're plastic insulator is clean okay so paper gasket first then our seal that goes right here okay don't forget that guy muy importante then our insulator and then our other seal Make sure it only goes on one direction, so make sure you put it on right. And it is kind of tricky. I'm going to just move all this stuff because it's going to be a pain in the butt. So let's uh, make sure that our surface on the intake manifold is clean. Now the tricky part is keeping all those gaskets together when we go to put it on. Carb solenoid down there. There we go. Everything's hunky dory still. Bam. Houston, we have connection. Still recording good. Okay, so now let's uh, <clears throat> let's cinch up our carb so we don't lose our gaskets. Okay. I probably won't get too crazy with tightening it, but, you know, get it snug up there, obviously, because we don't want that thing falling off. Okay, that's pretty tight. And I'll feel underneath to make sure we didn't, yep, didn't drop any gaskets. Gosh, I keep getting stuck. Okay, that's pretty tight. So now... We can start putting stuff back together. So, this front one connects to the piston choke. This one. So just put everything back into their clippies. Okay. And make sure we get our carefully plug back in our thermal. Thermal hose, vacuum lines, don't try to manhandle those things, you'll break it prong and then you're in trouble. And our fuel lines, which we'll save when we get to that point so I don't get in the way of something. So those are all plugged in, plugged in, plugged in. Uh, this one, hooked up 
here and then hooked up into our carburetor. That's our vacuum advance. Make sure it looks good. So let's see, now we can get the intake hosing on because we got our thermal valve plugged in down below. Okay, that feels good. And then we can put our back lines back in there. And our JIS screwdriver. It's nice with the intake hosing, they have a little, it has like a little notch. So you can press on the the uh, tightening screw and it will rest against the notch as you tighten it <clears throat> instead of it flopping around like most band clamps do. Top, bottom, actually let's get the bottom one on. side and then this one goes on the right side that tighten down okay I'm not gonna put the covers on quite yet because we don't need to have the covers on to run it we just want to make sure we're gonna work so let's put our coolant lines back on for our choke Okay, and don't forget we gotta plug in our solenoids. This is okay. That's okay, that's okay, that's in. We just have to hook up the throttle cable. We need to plug in our solenoids. Alright, it should be plugged in. Yep. Okay, right, plugged in. Everything's plugged in. Oh my back. Okay. Put a, the throttle cable on. Okay. All right, throttle cable's on. All our lines are hooked up. All I need to do is put the battery back in it and we'll test it out. All right, moment of truth. We know it's a good carburetor because it has been tested. So it's all bolted up, everything's reconnected. Battery is back in. Let's, uh, prime it, make sure that the fuel pump works. We'll probably hear some thudding because there's probably no fuel in that thing right now. And uh, cross our fingers, it starts. All right, how do I get in here? Poyito, you're gonna be in the way. Excuse me, Poyito. You're okay. Okay, let's see here. Hopefully we, we hear some noise. Yep. Fuel pump went. Make sure we're not in gear. There we go, there we go. Stay. Well, you know it was a bad carburetor because it started up. Come on, baby. <laughs> so, with that being said, we know it was a carburetor issue. Whether he threw it out of adjustment with all the screws and that messed it up, or maybe it's sitting for that time period from when it landed here, something got inside the carburetor and plugged it up. Um, so, a part two is going to be me taking that carburetor apart. Now that I have better knowledge on repairing or overhauling these, I'll make another video because uh, the first one I made was just me guessing, basically. But this one, I kind of have a better idea of what I'm doing. So I can walk you through the uh, carb process 
if you're uh, in the market to do that. But she's running and she's running solid. So clearly it was a carburetor issue. So cool. I'm going to let it run. But uh, I'll go ahead and put all the covers back on and everything. Um, but yeah, that was it. So I know I kind of cheated with having a backup carburetor to uh, fix this one. But basically what it comes down to is if you're getting spark and you're getting fuel and your carburetor is still not running, just take the carburetor off just clean it replace the solenoids just start over because you just there's so many variables that you start messing with just take the carburetor off clean it change the solenoids and i'm going to say uh most of the time that's going to fix it so again i sell all those parts in my store if you are in the mood to do that okgarage.com or uh I'm now offering a service where if you send me your carburetor, I'll overhaul it for you. Um, that's another option. Just contact me or find the parts in Japan and do it yourself and have fun. I'm going to have to mess with the idle on it, but it might be idling a little high right now, but at least it's running. So anyways, thanks for watching guys. I'm glad I could get that fixed and running and it was just a carburetor issue. So uh, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, like, subscribe, that cool stuff if you'd like. And share this to a buddy whose sandbar is not running. And tell him, clean your carburetor, bro. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. See you on the next one.